OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to add up every n number of numbers. So in my example, I want to add up every five numbers, which correspond to the quarters that I'm seeing in my data. Now I'm going to show you two methods of achieving this. The first method is the easiest method and it will work in any version of Excel. The second method will only work in Excel 365. It's much more involved, but it will spill. And really that's the only advantage of using that second method. Now with the first method, we're going to start off with a function called row. So if I don't put anything in the brackets, it's just going to return the row number of the current cell. Now what I want to do is take that away from my first row number in this column. So that's cell E2, row number of cell E2, and I'm going to lock that, close the bracket, press enter. And then if I copy that down, I get 0, 1, 2, 3. Now the reason I'm doing this is because eventually I want to return the position of the first number in each of the ranges I want to add up. Now to achieve that, all we do is multiply these results by five. So I'm going to put that in brackets and then times by five. Copy this down. So I get 0, 5, 10 and 15. So if you're adding up six values, you'd put six there, for example. So now I've got the starting point for each of the ranges. I can use the offset function to return the whole range that I want to add up. Now I need to give it a reference point, which is the starting point in my data, which is B2, comma. And then we have rows. So that's the number of rows that you're going to move from this starting point. Now that is going to be returned by this calculation. So either 0, 5, 10, or 15, then a comma, columns. I don't want to move any columns. I want to add up within the current column. And then height. So the height is the number of numbers that you want to add up. So I've got five values each time that I want to add up. So I put a five in there. Width we don't need to worry with because the default is one. Now, one more thing I need to do before I present it, that's lock this B2 reference because that's going to be our starting point for each of the formulas as it's copied down. Now it's saying spill because I've got these values in the way, but you can see four quarter one, it's returning those five values. So to get the total, I just need to sum them and then copy this formula down. Now for the second method that you can use in Excel 365, I'm going to start off with the sequence function. And all we want to do is return the numbers one, two, three, and four. So we need four rows of numbers one column, so that's the default, and we're starting with the number one. Right, now I'm going to do the next stage in another column, but we will eventually combine the formulas. We're going to use the index function. Now the array for the index function is the sales amounts that we're trying to add up. And I'm going to lock that, comma. Now what I want to do is return the first value within each of these quarters that we want to add up. So for the first quarter, the position of the value is one. Now to get this so I can copy it down for two, three, and four, I need to do a little bit of math. So what I do is I say F2 minus one times five plus one. So if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see it returns 389. Now, if I copy this down, you can see it returns the first number within each of these quarters. Now, I don't want to just return the first number. I want to return the entire range of five values. So what I can do is create that range in this formula. So I put a colon after this index function, and then I create another index function referring to the same range. But the idea is to return the last value in the range rather than the first. Now the way I do that is I calculate the row number as F2 times five, because there's five values that I want to return. So if I then press enter and delete these, you can see it returns the first five values in my data. If I manually change this to two, 
it will return values 6 to 10, etc. Now I'll undo that. What I would then do is add up those values. And if I copied this down, it gives me the same results as with my first example. Now, the problem we have here is that we have two sets of formulas to get to the same answer where we only had one formula. Now, to combine both, we can use the map function, which will also spill the results. Now, what I'm going to do is copy this formula, and I'm going to paste it into this cell. So first of all, though, I need to put everything in map. Now, the array is returned by the sequence function. That's returning 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what I need to do is use those values in a calculation. And to express the calculation, I use the lambda function. Now, what I need is like a placeholder for these four results. And you have to give it a name. So I'll call it i, comma. And then I'm going to paste in the calculation I want to perform. So that's my sum and index calculation. Now at the moment, I'm using a reference to F2 to get these positions, the positions that are returned by the sequence function. But now the sequence function is in the same formula as this sum and index function. And I've created a placeholder for each result within the sequence function. I've called it I. So all I need to do is replace what were my references to F2 with that parameter name. I need a close bracket at the end, in fact two, press enter, and you can see it works. I'll get rid of this formula that we don't need anymore. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.